So in today's class, we are going to learn about the concept of data cleaning in data science. So now we've covered class one, which is about obtaining your data and actually doing basic data analytics. In class two, we did data visualization. As you can remember, we covered a whole lot of uh, visualization um, tools, uh, density plots, pair plots, scatter matrix, and so on. And today we want to now move on to class three, which is about data pre-processing. And I'm going to quickly start. But before I start, let me just show you the topics we are going to be covering in data visual uh, in data pre-processing. There are about nine different subtopics. I'm not going to be boring you with uh, many theories. I'm going to simply keep it practical and simple. But when it comes that you have to learn some theoretical concept, I'm going to explain it to you in a very clear manner. If it requires going to my board behind to actually explain it, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it as well. If it requires using my digital board right here, I'm gonna use it. So to get to this page, because actually all the step-by-step -step and the code snippet we need is actually right here. So I'm actually following the steps I already set out. So if you want to get to that page, simply go to Google and go to Google and type kintondegenius.com uh, data science, you can actually find um, the page where we are. So kintondegenius.com uh, it should be slash data science. And once it takes you to this page, let me see. Yeah, so go to class three. That's where we are now, class three and that's where we are going to start so this is my folder and if i go back one step i have my data site today we are going to be working with the titanic data site with the wine data site and also we can actually use the breast cancer data, uh, data site as well so let's go ahead to get started right now before i continue let me just put the windows side by side so that we can actually see the tutorial while we work all right, so the first thing I'd like us to do is to uh, create a new notebook as usual. So I'm going to go back here and go to Primer. I'm going to create a new notebook. So I'm going to click on New and choose Python 3. And I'm going to call this class, click on this untitled. I'm going to call it class 3, which is Data Pre-Processing. Again, I'd like to recommend you subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please uh, go ahead to subscribe uh, to my channel right now. And that way, you kind of motivate me to keep making these lessons. And also, if you, um, if I make a new lesson, you get notified immediately. And if you are subscribed, when you write me a comment, I can easily respond uh, faster in that way. So please uh, click on the subscribe button below to subscribe. And if you have some comments you want to make, please let me know. So from here, you can see that data pre-processing data preprocessing is what you do once you obtain your data. The first step is once you obtain your data, you want to open this data, maybe in a spreadsheet, you want to see it, just scan through it, just to see how it looks like. And the next thing you want to do is to pre-process it. Data pre-processing is simply a fancy word for data cleaning and data preparation, right? So you want to check, are there some outliers? Are there some data that doesn't look uh, normal? Are there some data that doesn't fit into the trend? Are there some missing values? Are there some data that's actually supposed to be numeric, but they are not numeric? Are there some data that is too large or too small? You know, so you want to check all these things and want to ensure you pre-process your data. So you can actually read it out, read the explanation here in my website. So let me start with the first one. The first one is data scaling. What is data scaling? Data scaling is to simply scale your data so that all the values fit into a particular scale, possibly between one and zero, between one and 10 or something. So if you have a situation where you have data like one, two, three, and later you have 1,000, 1,003, or 2,000, they are actually too dispersed. You want to kind of scale it so that they fit into a particular scale, maybe between one and zero. So it's a technique that I, that I show that the attributes of your data set are in the same scale. Most times you need to rescale out data to scale of one to zero as required by machine learning algorithms like KNRS neighbor and gradient descent. Python provides a library called MinMax Scalar. So the first thing I'd like us to do now is import three different data sets. So I'm going to say from ESC, um, let me import pandas first, which are the models we need. So I'm going to say import 
So let me import first the Titanic data set. So I'm going to say Titanic. All right, so I got the path. So this is my, the path to my, uh, the Titanic data set in the Excel file um, in, the, in my directory. So let me call it path one. I'm going to also say path two is equal to paste. And I want to import as well the wine data set. So I'm going to say wine. So I'm going to also use the brain size data set. So let me just do one more step. So part one, part two, and part three. So we have the Titanic data set is read Excel and brain DF. Oh, sorry, wine. Uh, DF, DF for data frame because if you import data with Python, that data is actually a data frame. So PD dot read underscore CSV, and you want to specify the parts. This is part two. This is part one, and the last one is going to be the brain data size. I think it's going to be brain underscore size. Let me just make sure brain size the CSV. That's fine. So in this case, is brain size a CSV? Uh, okay, perfect. I think they are all important. So if you want, you can check them. So let me uh, check Titanic uh, TF. Let's see, you have Titanic TF. I'm going to check the wine data site as well. Wine underscore DF. And there is a wine data site and we have the brain DF as well. All right, uh, so you can see that the brain DF did not import well. So let's try to put set is equal to semicolon, if I can remember. I think it's gonna be fine this way. And let's run this. Okay, so you have to put separation is equal to semicolon, uh, because if you look at this uh, data in the brain uh, data site, it has is separated by semicolon. So keep that in mind. So let me just take out this. So let's actually perform some pre-processing now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import the module that is used for pre-processing. SQLine import. I don't know if I have all this in my website. I think I do. Okay. Uh, okay. So the import statement is not here in my website, but you can see it here from SQLine import pre-processing, pre-processing uh, as PP. All right, I'm going to run, perfect. Okay, so we want to scale, let's assume we want to scale uh, the phase uh, column of the Titanic data set. So if you look at the Titanic data set by saying Titanic DF, uh, let me just look at the first five rows. So I'm going to say Titanic DF dot head. And you can see that, um, uh, okay, let me just take a look at only the fair column. So Titanic TF specify fair. Of course, you can scroll this way, but and you can see the fair here, but I can actually do this way. So you can see that the fair column is a numeric value. So we can actually um, scale it uh, to fit into a scale of one and zero. So to do that, you have three steps, uh, about four steps. Step one, you create a min-max uh, scalar object. At this point, I'm going to create the min-max scalar object. So I'm going to call it data scalar. Data scalar is equal to pp.min-max scalar. And specify the range. In this case, we want to scale to a range of 0 to 1. Uh, it's going to be feature range is equal to between zero and one. And the next thing we want to do, I'm gonna run as well. Okay, uh, see SQLine the preprocessing does not have min max scalar, so it's gonna be E here. I'm gonna run again, fine. Step two is to extract the feature array because we want to kind of um, actually replace that feature in the data site with a scaled feature. So I'm going to say fair array is equal to titanic df df and specify fair so in this case now if i look at the fair array it's just the the give me one second so this is only the fair column now that i've extracted i've extracted it i want to process it and fix it back into the data set 
All right, so I want to perform the scaling, the actual scaling of this array. You can see some are 7, 201, 151. So I'm going to say the scale, uh, the scale data now is going to be fair array. I'm going to add, add, I'll say scaled. Now the names you want to use can be different if you want. You can use the names I use, you can also use yours. So I'm going to use the data scale object I created with data scale object, this guy here. And I'm going to simply scalar uh, dot fit transform dot fit transform and specify the fair array so this is actually going to perform the scaling on this extracted column and I'm going to run okay now if I take a look at the fair array scale now you see that it's, a, it's different so I'm going to kind of say uh, paste this right here and run so you see now that it's different it's between 0 and 1 right so we scale this data to the, uh, the fair array to 0, 0 and 1 so one thing you can replace the original column you can also actually create a new column uh, I've not explain to you how to drop columns but I'm actually going to do it because the reason I'm up to do it is because um, if we look at the data site there are so much columns that we don't see some of the columns so we can actually replace the the existing column but what I would like to do is to create a new column which is scaled fair right I want to create a new column so that you can actually see the two data side by side I'm going to see Titanic DF uh, fair. This is a new column now. I'm going to say scaled is equal to um, yeah. So is equal to fair array scaled. Okay. So what's going to happen now is going to create a new column with this new data set, a uh, new the scale data set. So if I run this now, and if I look back, if I look at the Titanic DF now, Titanic DF, you see that it contains one new column, which is actually the scaled uh, column. So if I, you can see now, if I scroll this way, you can see the fair scaled, you can see it right here, added here. So the exercise I want to give you now is um, actually to perform scaling in the, maybe the tickets, perform it in the ticket by yourself, perform it in the ticket um, uh, column. Now on my website here, you can also see that you can replace the existing column with the scales uh, values. In that way, to replace the existing column, you can actually just use the name of the existing column exactly like this, and it's going to replace the existing column with, this, with the new uh, set of values you calculated. Let's now move to the next part, dropping and interpolating missing data. Now, um, how do you know whether some data is missing? One way is to just look at the data set. You can see end to end, say it shows missing data. To check uh, the missing data, so you can actually say, you know, second, you can actually say df.info. Uh, I think this should be it. Now, what is happening here is now it's going to tell you which columns has so many missing data. How do we know? Because it tells us that the number of entries is 1,309 or 1,309. And we have the carbon to contain only 295. Meaning that of 1,309 records, the carbon column and scroll up here, the cabin column is missing over a thousand records, right? The embarked column is missing only one record. Uh, or not, not a record, but it's missing a value there. And you also have the boat column is missing a whole lot of records. The body column is missing uh, so on, right? So we have to now drop columns where there are so many missing values, we simply drop them because these missing values will actually make your data analysis to become erroneous and, sc and, sc and screwed up. So, the, so to drop some columns, you can actually use, uh, first you want to specify the columns you want to drop. And this, my website, you have the syntax to actually drop columns, it's right there. 
So let me specify calls to drop, specify the columns uh, to drop. In this case, let's drop the body, the boats, the name, the ticket, and the cabins. All right, and we also want to drop the name. And I explained to you how to drop some columns if there are a whole lot of missing data or the, the, the data is erroneous, or maybe this column does not contribute to anything to the data analysis. For instance, the, the name of the passenger may not contribute anything. That, that's just names. Or maybe the, the ticket number does not contribute anything. I mean, what does ticket number have to do with uh, whether the person survived? Because at the end of the day, we have to analyze, to predict the survival of each of these passengers. But this is optional. If you want to keep these columns, uh, it's also fine. And you can exclude them when you want to do actual analysis. But let me just show you how to drop. And now I specify the column to drop. Now to actually drop them, I'm going to say Titanic df is equal to and specify the column to drop calls to drop and specify the axis now when you specify the axis as axis is one it means you are dropping the columns uh, that is the columns is being dropped but when the axis is zero it's going to drop records right we're going to talk about dropping records later on uh, after now so we specify the column to drop and specify the axis to be one to be one and i'm going to run this at this point so if i look at the titanic df one more time titanic df.info uh you'll see that the columns are actually gone you see so we have the the boat is no longer there the cabin is no longer there you have the cabin here and we have um the name is also not there again because you can see we have name here. All right, so we have the, 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 the data set now kind of makes sense because now we have almost complete the records except we have the age of the individual, which is not complete. We're gonna also do some data pre-processing right there. All right, so now we want to talk about interpolating missing values. Now, if you have certain missing values and you don't want to actually drop the complete column you can actually interpolate these missing values based on existing values for instance if you have a range of values going from 2 4 6 8 missing value 12 missing value uh, 16 you now know that there is a trend and you can actually interpolate and replace those missing values based on the average of the two values on both sides of this missing value so that basically what interpolation is all about so if you look at the age so if i say titanic df titanic df and you take a look at the age you see that the age uh here is we have 29 we have 0 0.9 this doesn't make sense to me but maybe it's a baby or something it's possible and let's say you have this missing value here which is nan so you can now interpolate this missing value. So you don't do it manually, you actually interpolate using interpolate function. So I'm going to just run the function to interpolate missing values. Remember that in age, we have lots of missing values. Let's say about um, 300 or 200 and something missing values. And let's interpolate to actually replace this missing values with something like an average or something. So I'm going to say df, uh, df titanic uh, sorry titanic df um, the age this is a column that contains missing value now is it equal to so is it age uppercase or lowercase so it's lowercase as you can see here so it is fine titanic df uh, age dot interpolate okay so this is a function to interpolate and it's going to actually interpolate and replace those missing values so if i look at titanic df.info now if i look at the info you see that we have under the age we now have complete set of data so we have 1309 so it's complete now because those missing values has been interpolated all right, so we have also, we can drop rows with missing values. So what does this mean? So if you have, uh, 
maybe 1309 records okay but in some columns there are missing values now you can drop all the rows and that's going to reduce the records to maybe the the records only the records that have complete values in the in the, in the record in the complete row right let's move on to the next one data normalization when data contains features that has broad range of values it's similar to to scaling but it's a little bit different for example some features may have zeros or close to zero other features may have very high values say 1000 or 100 in this case you have to uh, uh, normalize it to a scale or uh, a range of length one so this is a simple explanation and looking at it in a simple way uh, it's about the same with data scaling but in this case it's a bit different because the uh, the mathematical explanation of normalization is a bit uh, not so simple so it says n1 l1 normalization means you have to make each row of data set the sum of the absolute values will always be one for l2 the sum the, the square root of the sum the square root of the squares of the sum will always be one so uh, and that is called euclidean normalization is for L2, for L1 is Manhattan. So let's now do normalization in a different data set. Um, I'd like to clear this place so that I'll have some room. So let me run here. All right. So I'm going to, maybe we, we are going to work on a different data set. Let's try, let's say, um, brain DF. Okay, so let's see if we can work on brain DF now. And um, just seeing this, uh, data set I see that we can actually perform this normalization on maybe the the FSIQ column because I can see 83 although this is just tutorial for, uh, for simplicity normally this data actually requires no normalization but I'm just going to show you how to perform normalization on one of the columns of the brain as uh, of the brain data set so the first thing you want to create a normalizer object. So I'm going to create a an object. I'm going to call it normalizer. It's going to be PP. PP is the pre-processing that we imported from SKLine, the pre-processing model. Dot normalizer. I'll specify the norm should be L1. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is to uh, extract the column we want to normalize so in this case we want to, we want to normalize let's say the f i f s i q column so i'm going to extract it into an array because you cannot actually normalize it in the in place where it's actually in a data frame which is a series but we want to uh, convert it to an array first i think i'm getting it <laughs> so so a data frame is different from an array just keep that in mind Okay, so let me say um, the name of the column here is FSIQ. So I'm going to say F, FSIQ. Let me use lower case, there's no problem. FSIQ uh, is equal to, in this case, it's an array. I'm going to extract this as an array. Is equal to, uh, it's going to be brain DF and uh, FSIQ okay so if I look at the FSIQ array now you see that it's an array FSIQ array okay so it extracted as a list of items now we are going to normalize it so I'm going to say normalize is equal to normalizer.transform and specify the array uh, is going to be FSIQ array. And if you look at the normalized values now, you'll see that uh, it's now normalized. But I'm going to append these normalized values as a column in the in the data site so that we can actually uh, visualize it. So I'm going to say brain tf. I'm going to specify a new column. So I'm going to say FSIQ normalized. 
uh, is now equal to the array which is f s i q array normalized I want, I want to actually purposely typing it out I could have copied it from my website uh, right here and used but I really recommend the better the more you type the better you become uh, proficient in data science so please always type it out by yourself I also like to recommend this class is a practical class so it's not just a video class that you have to keep watching me talking actually start following the steps with me and it becomes clearer as you go so if i look at the data set at this point if i say brain df you'll see that we now have a normalized uh, um, column added here right so but since these values in fsiq are about the same range the normalization is just giving us the same number which is one okay so actually you can also change to l2 normalization to see how it's going to look like so let me see i'm just running to run okay so actually nothing changed so in this case we don't have to normalize um, unless you want to try to choose other columns and normalize them and see how it looks like let's now move on to the next part because i want to cover this uh, data pre-processing in this class 